Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to create a video for your project. The first thing you're going to do is to gather your information that you want to share to others. Here's the information I've gathered of how an octopus can defend itself in many ways, which is the topic that I'm going to use for this video here today. Now it's your turn. Take a look at the information that you gathered. What information do you want to share? After we have decided on the information that we want to present in our video, we will now have to create a storyboard. A storyboard is a series of scenes that shows everything that is going to happen in the video. Here's my storyboard that I created using the information I gathered earlier. I start my storyboard with a title. A title that describes what I will be sharing in my video. As well as a sketch that goes along with the title. For my second scene, I want to introduce my audience to what my video is all about. Kind of like a thesis statement in an essay. Here at the bottom box, I wrote down what I'll be saying when this picture pops up on my video. This is called a voiceover an off-screen voice recording of you describing what is going on in the scene. We will talk more about this when we start making our video. Here are the next few scenes where I describe examples of how an octopus defends itself. For each of these scenes, I create a quick sketch, but also added text to help better explain my information. Again, I wrote down the sentences in the box below of what I am planning to record myself saying. For my last scene, I end by thanking the audience for watching and remind my audience of what the video was about. Go ahead and create your own storyboard. Make sure to sketch out a picture and add text that helps describe the information you are presenting. Remember, these are quick sketches, so you can draw stick figures if you want. Okay, now you have to collect or create your own video content. Uh, these are images, uh, video recordings, voice recordings, really anything that you want to add into your video. Things that will match up with the scenes that you planned in your storyboard. Let's take a look at this scene. I have three options. The first option is to record video or to capture what is going on in your scene. This is a great way to visually explain to your audience your information. However, since it's too difficult for me to record or take a picture of an octopus propelling itself backwards, I'm going to try the second option which is to find photos or video footage on the internet that I can use that are under the Creative Commons licensing. You can find photos by going to google.com, images, tools, usage rights, and then Creative Commons licenses. You can use any of these photos with the required attribution. Here are the results of our search. Unfortunately, I did not find any images I want to use for my video. So I decided to use a third option. Create my own images for each scene by taking photos, recording videos, or creating images and animations through the use of different apps and digital tools. So that's what I did. Here's a video I recorded myself for the second scene of my video. Here are the images created by Mr. Smith for every other scene. He used the Keynote app on the iPad. You can use any app or platform you would like to create your content. Now it's your turn. Go ahead and choose a tool and create your own content that matches the scenes in your storyboard. Now that you have created the content, it is time to create the video. I will use the iMovie app on my iPad to create my video. You can also use the Clips app to create your video as well. First tap on Create Project, then Movie. On the left, you have your media sections. It is important to note that you need to make sure the video and images that you want uh, to use for your video is actually on your iPad or the device you'll be using. Tap on all the files that you want to put into your video. Make sure you are tapping the files in the order which you want them to be placed in your video. For example, I want this file to be first, so I will tap this one and then continue. When you are done, tap on Create Movie. Now you can see your files in the video timeline at the bottom. I'm going to play my video now. As you can see, each clip has a Ken's Burns effect enabled. The Ken Burns effect is a type of zooming effect that is used to make images more dynamic. You can disable this effect by tapping on the clip and tap on Ken Burns enabled. You can also see that transitions were automatically added to your video. 
You can change the speed or the type of transition by tapping on the button between the clips. Now I need to add an additional file. I'm going to tap on the plus button at the top right. Reorder the files in your timeline by holding and dragging them to the correct location. Now I need to record myself explaining each scene. To do this, tap on the mic, then record. Record yourself reading off what you plan to say from your storyboard. You can then accept the recording if you liked it, review it, or retake it. The camera icon next to the microphone icon will allow you to take pictures or shoot video and then add it to your video timeline. To change the length of a clip, you can tap on a clip and drag the yellow ends to make it longer or shorter. For both images and videos, you can add text by tapping on the clip and then titles. You can also add filters to the clip. Only for video clips, you can split them into two separate clips by scrolling in the timeline to position the playhead, the white line, where you want to split the clip, tapping on the clip, then tap actions, and then split. For video clips, you can also change the volume as well as the speed of the clip. If you want to remove a clip, tap on it and then tap the trash can bin on the far right corner. If you ever make a mistake, Tap on the undo button on the right, right above the timeline. Additionally, you can add music and then choose the song that you want in the background of your video. You can tap on the music clip to make any changes like volume. Let's say I'm finished. Tap done, tap the share button, and then save video and choose the export size. In your iPad's Photos app, you will find your video and then you can share it through any platform you choose. So that's it. Just to review, let's recap on the steps we took to create this video. First, you gathered and organized the information you wanted to share. Then you created a storyboard that contained a sequence of scenes that shows exactly what will happen in your video. Next, you found or created content for your video that matches what you planned out in your storyboard. Images, video clips, or even animations. Lastly, you combined your content using a video making app or tool and shared it with your audience. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.